Back to our responsive e-commerce watch website landing page with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, where we are dealing with our image gallery for watch collection. It was supposed to have a masonry layout, but then I just hate the layout irregularity in the end, so I ended up making it a semi-masonry layout image gallery. Someday, I will make one just for you guys even though I hate masonry layout. Anyways, we have scroll reveal animation on these images along with hover effect animation to reveal our collection name with some dark overlay on images. We have a nice box shadow and slight translation on hover on each image container and we have a cute section title that we created in our previous video. It's obviously responsive, but we also have created different image gallery layout for different screen sizes for fashion purposes. In mobile screen all image containers are small and equal in size. Just a typical image gallery layout. With nice looking text reveal on hover animation. We also have a nice font that I have to show off to you guys like I didn't hunt it down from other YouTube videos. Suddenly, things change in the layout when we change the size of the web page to tablet screens. The images grow big until we hit a certain point where we have two images in one line. And the last image is the only big one because I hate irregular layouts and images were seven. And then we were like, Let's be brave and have an actual irregular image container with different widths but not the entire layout of this section. And that's the story of how we ended up with this unique layout for large screens and different layouts on other screen sizes for our cute image gallery. Time to look at the file setup and be mesmerized by it. All right. Let's start by initializing our VS Code browser that is slow and basically sucks but still sometimes come in handy because we are lazy to open and see our actual browser. There it is our rest of the website that we have created in our previous videos in this playlist that you can check out from the description below. Now for once we have some new images that we got in order to create this image gallery. These images along with code for previous sections you can find from the description as well. Now that we have seen it all, let's hit the HTML for this image gallery. Before diving into the HTML, I want to let you know that I'll be uploading the full code for this in just a few days. In the meantime, I kindly ask you to watch my videos in their entirety. It helps support my work while you enjoy the content and code I create for you. Anyways, in HTML the gallery section is wrapped for organization and accessibility featuring a bold heading with text shadow and a tagline that we created in our previous video. The gallery container div is the main grid layout holding all the items. It organizes the gallery into responsive, visually appealing cute blocks. We have a gallery item marked as tall for custom grid styling. It displays an image with a subheading, men's collection, adding context to the visual content. Let's copy-paste this gallery item 6 more times in order to have gallery item class 7 times in total. Classes like tall or wide are used to adjust the size of specific items in the grid in the most easiest way possible. Now we are changing the images for each gallery item along with its text but every time in our videos this is happening I have no idea what to say. Except for asking to subscribe to my channel since it's free and means nothing to you but means the world to me. I bet you didn't see my subscription request coming out of the blue but please hit that sexy subscribe button. Anyways, we are seeing too many different watch collections that we have figured out after searching the names of collections on the internet for a whole century. I bet at the end of this e-commerce website playlist we will be able to have a career in marketing and business. Anyways, we also have another class named Rem that we are going to add to our final gallery item to ensure balanced layout on different screens. Now let's see if we have completed writing everything in HTML and how it looks. I forgot to add data reveal attribute to add our scroll reveal animation on each gallery item. Check the CSS and JavaScript for the data reveal attribute in previous videos or via the code link in the description. Time for CSS style makeup. Before we write CSS, let me quickly show you guys the classes we created earlier that we use today. 
like this data reveal attribute that we styled in the most simplest ways to add scroll reveal animation. Also the subheading class that has the nice Recoleta font. And how can we forget our glowing flickering section title that glows on hover. Hopefully you like it all but I will suggest to just get the code directly from the link in the description. Now let's start writing CSS for this image gallery we have. Alright so now we center the entire gallery section using Flexbox, allowing wrapping for responsive layout, and ensures content visibility with overflow visible. The gallery container creates a responsive grid with evenly spaced items, adjusting columns based on screen width, while keeping items at least 300 pixels wide and 200 pixels tall. It spans the full width of the viewport. Now for each gallery item, we styled individual gallery items with a border, rounded corners, and shadow effects. Add smooth transitions for hover animations. Let's see how it looks and I hope you like the border around the gallery item. Did you notice how some of the images are not well fit in their border? Well we will get to that in a moment but for now let's put a nice box shadow. Preferably a little smooth box shadow so when we hover, we have a slightly thicker box shadow to emphasize on element transition upwards. And finally we will put transition on both transform and box shadow because that's what we are going to change on hover. Now we need to fix the images inside the image container. Gallery item image ensures images fit perfectly within their containers, maintaining aspect ratio and adding a transition effect for scaling. See how images are covering the entire container well enough now. For hover effect on gallery item we just add a thicker box shadow and a translate Y to move gallery item slightly up on hover. It creates a hover animation with a lift effect and enhanced shadow for a 3D like appearance. The gallery item before creates a semi-transparent black overlay across the gallery item. Its opacity transitions from zero to visible on hover adding a smooth focus effect. On hover, the gallery item before sets the overlay's opacity to 1, making it fully visible. Gallery item tall makes the gallery item span one additional row in the grid layout. Whereas gallery item wide makes the gallery item span one additional column in the grid layout. The last one gallery item RAM configures a specific grid span for this class, adjustable in media queries. The subheading class positions the text at the bottom and uses transform to shift it down initially. Since our text need to come into view on hover, a smooth ease and out transition will be added to create a slide up effect when it becomes visible. On hover, subheading slides up into view. Since our VS Code browser is fully hanging, let's see what we have so far here. So our hover animations, borders, and other styles seems to be working. But something is wrong here. We are not supposed to have a scroll bar on small screen unless something is scrolling within image gallery section or main that shouldn't be scrolling. Look how scroll bar is suddenly visible and then vanishes all while scrolling. Let me fix it but I believe it's either this section, or entire main in which all our sections exist that is having overflow problems. Doesn't look like section problem but more like a main thing. It's usually overflow issues so let's see what we can do to fix it. I had this problem before so I have an idea hopefully it works. Oops that didn't work what is the issue? There it is, the pane in my something. So I may have accidentally written overflow Y and overflow X visible in our gallery section in this browser, but now all we need to do is change overflow X to overflow in main. Let me see the rest of the stuff that seems to be working and then change the overflow of main in code. Make sure gallery has overflow visible. And our main has overflow hidden for both X and Y. 
Now let me confirm if our scroll bar is glitching like a ghost in a horror movie or not. Perfect! Now let's have different responsive layouts for different screen sizes using media queries. There it is our media queries that after scrolling for centuries we found them. Alright so for screen sizes above 768 pixels, or for tablet screens we want the last remaining AUG1 to span to columns. So that's why we have last remaining AUG1 to have a different class of rem unlike others. Now we are changing the value of grid column from span 1 to span 2. Layout looks better and more disciplined, right? You saw the last one a little bit with full width, but the browser is hanging too much to see fully. Finally, we scroll to the bottom of this browser yay. As for larger screens above 10, 24 pixels, all we need to do is give whatever grid column or row value we want to have different widths for each gallery item. I lost my temper with that hanging browser so I closed it. Anyways for both other classes, we modify gallery item tall and gallery item wide to span additional rows or columns for improved layout on desktops. Grid row for tall and grid column for wide. I was being too lazy to do this in a mature sophisticated way and include JavaScript and such, when I can simply do this more easily with added classes like tall wide and rem. Check the HTML to see where these classes are used, or apply them to any image to adjust its size as desired. Congratulations! No JavaScript. Alright, let's finalize this thing by seeing it without video being sped up to see how everything looks and works. Please support me by watching my videos even though you can find the code for at least the previous videos in this playlist. I will upload today's code in a few days but please watch my videos and if you want to check out how the final complete e-commerce website will look like then check the YouTube short from the description below. We have a cute scroll reveal animation, smooth hover effects and pretty image galleries all in one so please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, it's free anyways. Our e-commerce watch website is unique and responsive as well and since I keep talking I will shut up my babbling and let you enjoy the rest of the video. If you have been dealing with my dead humor for 13 minutes straight then, 